Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Sid, your host with Sid Down with Sid Podcast. Our guest today is David Weiss, who is a flat earth believer. And uh, uh, I am going to have David introduce himself for a few minutes before we kind of get into this podcast. So that being said, David, thanks so much for being a guest on our, on our podcast today. Hey, Sid, thanks for having me. And I've listened to a few of your podcasts and I am going to try to not fire hose information to, to you and your listeners because it's going to be overwhelming and earth shattering. Okay. And I tell people, do not believe anything I say, right? I don't believe the earth is flat. I know it's not a spinning globe. I know it's level and horizontal. I know it's not moving. Okay. Belief is the enemy of knowing as Crow 777 Radio says, um, belief is easy. We just had a quick conversation. Where do I live? I live in Connecticut. That's a belief. You don't, don't know it. <clears throat> to know it, you'd have to do some research. You'd have to take some time, put some effort in there, and then you could figure it out. Hey, he does live in Connecticut. But it's easier to believe than to know. And everybody believes they live on a spinning ball flying through an infinite universe. But they don't even know why they believe it. They think they know why season and sunsets, boats over the horizon, you know, stuff like that. But then when you actually look at it, you'll see that you've been gatekept from actually seeing the seeing the real picture. So quick bio on me. Um, I grew up on the East Coast. I, I really lived in the same town my whole life. I went to college. I went to corporate America. I started my own business. I was doing super successful. I ran a um, podcast out of New York City. Um, it was a comedy and conspiracy at Stand Up New York um, Comedy Club. They had a, a podcast studio and it was called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. And we were looking into many of the deceptions that go over. You know, there's so many and I don't want to trigger anybody by mentioning them, but one of them happened in the, in the big city there. Um, and then people started sending me flat earth stuff. Dave, you got to look into flat earth. And like any intelligent person, I would just ban them from our social media. They're never allowed to comment on our, on our podcast again. They're too stupid right. if they want me to watch a flat earth video. But then I was forced to look into it. And I went in with a bad attitude. I went in, I'm going to disprove flat earth. Now, that's not the mindset of a truth seeker. I'm going to disprove it. No, you go in to find the truth. But I went in to disprove flat earth. And that's how you become a flat earther. So... By the end of this podcast, I'm going to ask you a question at the end, because in your booking, when you book me, I have a little line that says, do you think the earth is flat, um, a, a spinning globe or something else? And you checked off spinning globe. So at the end of this podcast, I'm going to ask you for one reason why you think that. Of course. And I have plenty of reasons here to ask you why you think the earth is flat. Mm -hmm. um, so, so just, you know, for our audience, uh, I'm going to give a few points and I want you to chime in on this, you know. Um, according to flat earth believers, they think the earth is stationary and everything revolves around it. Um, they, they think it's a shape of a disc with North Pole in the center and the South Pole is an ice wall on the edge of the disc, which you guys call Antarctica, right? And, and that being said, you say that gravity does not exist. Instead, it comes upwards from the acceleration of the flat earth, you know? And... Last but not the least, for Earth to be flat and have nights and days, according to you guys, your belief is you will have to shrink the sun and move it closer to the Earth. Now, Dave, this is what I have read what flat earthers believe. Now, since you are a flat earth believer, um, as a choice or by force, as you said, tell me more, you know, where if I am wrong, if I'm correct, what would you like to add on to that and so forth? So... Just a quick, uh, a quick, quick thing here. Do you think that mainstream media is here to inform us of the truth? Well, I personally don't believe in mainstream media. If you look at my very good. post, I very absolutely good. don't buy their propaganda. Absolutely not. And when and when you talk about mainstream media, we're talking about Google search results also, because Google will feed you what they want to feed you. So you Googled Flat Earth and you came across the information from the Flat Earth Society, right? When you Google Flat Earth, you get images like this. No right. flat earther believes this. No flat earther believes that we're a disc, that we're a disc floating in space. No flat earther believes that, hey, we're, we're the only flat planet and all the other planets are around. No flat earther believes that the earth is rising to cause gravity. But this is what the flat earth society will tell you. And if you remember during Obama's administration, he mentioned the flat earth society, I think, eight different times in I speeches. Remember. 
We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. What does that make people want to do? I'm going to go check out the Flat Earth Society, right? If Flat Earth was what the Flat Earth Society is, Flat Earthers would be crazy and insane, okay? But that's not what Flat Earth is. That is a gatekeeping site to make you believe a bunch of nonsense. And when you say the ice wall, um, we don't believe in, in an ice wall, okay? We believe in a shoreline, of water. Now, large bodies of water at rest need containment, right? A bathtub, we'll call that a large body of water, needs containment. What's the containment? It's the tub. If the tub was lower than the surface of the water, the water would flow away, okay? It needs containment. A lake, a pond, right, needs containment. What's that containment? It's the shoreline around the, around the, um, around the pond. And the shoreline has to be higher than the pond, right? Absolutely. You with, you with me? Yeah. So, they want you to believe that Antarctica is a continent at the bottom of a spinning ball, which is scientifically impossible. We'll get it. We'll get into all of that. Right. They want you to believe that it's uh, uh, um, it's at the bottom of a ball. But when you ask for satellite, we'll get into that also or high altitude photos of Antarctica. All you get is cartoons. All right. We can zoom in. I can go to Google Earth and zoom in and see my house. I can see my car, in my driveway. OK, it's an old picture, but, you know, well, I, I have can two see points on, two points on that, if you don't mind. Since you brought up uh, pictures of, uh, you know, I've heard this uh, even in your few videos before okay. that why there is no pictures of Antarctic for, uh, Antarctica from space. Two things. Number one, the reason being the Earth's curvature blocks the South Pole from seeing more satellites, which is known as the geosynchronous orbit, which is a special orbit that's around 22,000 miles above the equator traveling in the direction of Earth's rotation, which makes the satellite feels stationary instead of orbiting around the Earth. Now, that's point number one. Recently, on June 15, 2020, 13, a couple of months ago, Lima, the Landsat image mosaic of Antarctica, is the first ever two-color high-resolution view of Antarctic continent uh, being uh, <clears throat> uh, kind of uh, given to the public, you know. So now, I want you to chime in on this and, and, and give me your take, because once again, I have... I have heard you before. You know, I respect your opinion. Once again, these are our opinions, right? We are not scientists yeah. and all that, but you believe in what you believe. I believe in what I believe, right? These are our opinions. No, so, so, no, so I got you. Take on this. Yeah. So, so I haven't seen the satellite image that you're talking about, but if we can compare, we'll look at other images that space agencies have given us. And, you know, once a liar, always a liar. One, you know, if you're caught lying a thousand times, I, you pretty much can assume that everything they tell you is a lie. Just finishing what I was saying before. Yeah. Here is the, the shoreline, which you call the ice wall of Antarctica. It's Antarctica. They don't teach you is the highest land on earth. OK, it makes sense. If it's going to contain our world pond, all of the oceans, it needs to be higher. And it is higher all the way around. So this is our world, our known world. 60 degrees south is purple line. You're not allowed to go beyond there without a guided tour by a government run agency. And um, why can't we explore Antarctica? Right. And the answer is because we have to protect the penguins and the ice. But we can deforest the Amazon, the lungs of our world. No problem. But we can't chance to drop a cigarette butt on the ice okay do it's you really weird. believe that david do you really believe well, that that's, because i have seen i don't believe people that getting, people getting jobs on the south pole people oh I absolutely documentaries where people and mm -hmm. i actually had a conversation with my friends how the hell these people even are able to live there on a six-month assignment men women scientists and they are actually living there and and ironically i watched this documentary actually i, I would say three four months ago you know, I found it on YouTube and, and I was actually really intrigued. So um, um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of backlash. No disrespect. You know, once again, my no, no, no problem. I, I like it, but you, you got to let me you got to let me answer. And, and, and unfortunately, you know, belief is easy. You can believe right. something. The answer takes a little bit longer. Go um, for it, David, please. And, and and so I'm just trying to find uh, an image. To, here we go. Scott Basin. All right. So. Here is a, one of the bases. If you're looking down on the earth and, and perhaps it looks like this. So yeah, mm -hmm. people go and they work here. Nobody goes from here mm -hmm. over to Australia. Nobody goes around the bottom and comes over, right? No one has ever circumnavigated the earth south. People have circumnavigated east and west or heading north to south. But once you head south, you never come back. It's never been done south to north ever. You can go north to south, but you can't go south to north. Right. Because north is in the center 
Mm-hmm. South is every direction away from the center. East right. and west are circles around north, right? That's on, that's the same on a globe and on a flat earth, all right? So so when you say people work there, yeah, tons of people work. We have some flat earthers that work there. Uh, one of them was a plumber. He was there for over a year. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, you know, the truth is, you know, they, they go to a base. There's a base over here and there's mm-hmm. another base over here, mm-hmm. all right? And, but no one ever travels from one base to the other um, in a direct flight over the South Pole. It's kind of interesting. Um, so where I'm trying to, where's the other thing I was looking for? Um, again, another look, at, another look at it. If you go, you want to spend ten to $50,000 for a couple days on a ship, you'll go here to Rothschild Island or Deception Island, and it's huge. Now, this is like a tiny, tiny piece of Antarctica, bigger than many countries, okay? Mm -hmm. This is all you get to see. You don't get to explore. All of this is off limits. What's out there? We don't know. We want the right to go explore. But um, there is, you know, there's lots of old information about what's out there. Again, it's been cut off from us. So, you know, it's not about believing. I, I know that we're not allowed to explore Antarctica. Why is that? Why is that? And I know the answer. The answer is because we find out the true nature of our world. So what else you said? Um, you said, uh, what, where, where did you want to go? You had a couple questions in that first. Well, question. I, have we'll a, I, have a, I have a lot of questions. So I have let's go one, one at a time. One at a time. Let's do it. So I have a few questions where I have problems with the flat earth theory and model. Okay. Number right. one. So we're going to go one by one. So I have my first question is why the entire earth does not get light at the same time. Since we know the sun is 109 times wider than the earth, which is around 864,000 miles in diameter, you know, being a flat earth. Yeah. How did you, how did you measure the sun? That's the distance of the sun from the earth. Well, how did you get that measurement? Do you know how they got it? Or are you just trusting a guy in a white lab coat that wears a bow tie that used to be a comedian? Well, listen, I am just going by the numbers that are being given so, um, scientific so, reasons, correct? So hold on. So if science is lying to us, if the scientific community, the, the elite scientific community is lying to us, not all scientists, because scientists will read something in a book, take it as a fact, and then use that for their equation. All right. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a car? Yes. Uh, does it have wheels? Of course. Can you prove that you have a car? Not right now, but yes, you can. Course, can you yeah. can you measure your car with length and height? Yes. Physically measure. It. Can you prove that the wheels spin? Yes. Can you prove that they have curvature to them if you measured them? Curvature around the wheel. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So these are things that you can physically measure. No one has ever been able to measure curvature of the earth. No one has ever been able to get a, cre- a correct uh, radius because the radius of the earth dictates all of the other sizes and distances to all of the other bodies in the sky, including the sun. And you know how they got the radius of the earth? Mm-hmm. Oops. Now they got the radius of the earth. They, uh, they did a, um, a, a Venus, which is uh, about the same size as earth was transiting the sun. And they had somebody look at it from the East coast and the West coast. And they noticed the transit time started and stopped at different times. Then they did some perfect, goodly good math and said, the sun is 93 million miles away. The problem with that equation is there's a huge assumption in there. Venus, this light that we see in the sky that's as bright as the sun, just small, is the size of Earth. When I say it's a light in the sky within the Earth system, and you can't prove either one of us right, okay? Although I can kind of prove that Venus isn't what they say because when you look at sizes and brightness of things that are reflecting sunlight, none of it adds up. Right. So nobody knows the radius of the earth. Nobody knows the size of the sun or the distance of the sun. And I ask people to go out with an open mind and look at the sun on a clear day and look at it on a blue sky day. You'll see the blue sky is behind the sun, behind the sun. We'll get into day. We'll we'll get into how day and night works. Um, And that's that's actually one of my favorite questions. But here is I just want to pull this up. So here's a balloon at one hundred and twenty thousand feet. And the sun over here mm-hmm. is not much higher than the balloon. I'm not saying the, the sun's 120,000 feet. I'm saying the sun that we see is in, an, is in an apparent position. And if you look, there's kind of like a hot spot on the clouds here. Now, if the sun was 93 million miles away, everything would be lit up all the time, which is where your question comes from. Well, why isn't the whole, if the earth was flat and the sun was 93 million miles away, it would be daylight all the time. However, <clears throat> when the sun is, um, when the sun, when the, when we're talking about a small sun, just like every observation shows us, 
the sun only casts light in its general area. Now there's direct sunlight and then there's daylight. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you wait, if you're watching the sunrise, waiting for the sunrise, sun not rising for 10 minutes, it's daylight before the sun rises. It's daylight. That's daylight. Direct sunlight is when you can see the sun and the sky fluoresces, the, whether it's a dome or not, the, the gases in the sky fluoresce, nitrogen, which is the most of the upper atmosphere, fluoresces blue. And so the electricity, sun is sending electricity, that's how solar panels work, um, it, it fluoresces the sky. And as the sun moves in between the tropics, the amount of day and night changes. If you watch, I'll go from August, September, October. October, November, December. In December, notice the size of the light. It kind of wraps around more because in December, we're closer to the dome, if you will, and the light wraps a little bit. So it's nighttime over here. You can't see the sun because of perspective, right? Perspective. Let me show you. Um, well, you can't see the sun because the earth is glow. So that's no, why when that's, there is, well, that, when that, is that, that is an assumption, but I can show you how it works on a, on a flat earth, right? So we're looking so David, at we're uh, looking. Correct me, is this the flat Earth clock app that you developed? Correct. That, that is correct. Would you mind giving our audience? Actually, that was my question before I should have gone with the flat Earth theory and model situation. Could you just take a moment to explain the audience why did you come with a flat Earth clock app? What is it and what's the purpose? Okay, I, I will. Let me. Why well, I got this image up? Go, this go is th this is street lights, and they're yes. not going over the curve. They're just merging into the horizon. This is the sun, and it's just merging into the horizon. So it's going beyond this line here that you think is Earth curvature is actually thousands of feet above your eye line. But everything comes to your eye level. The clouds come down, the ground ramps up, and everything stops at the horizontal eye zone, which we call the horizon. Right. And things go things above it go beyond it and things below it, things that are, are below your eye level go into it. And we can get we'll get into that in a minute. But if you want to talk about the app, I'm happy to do that. All right. So why did I come up with the app? Because um, back in 2014, 15, 16, I'd be talking to people about Flat Earth and I'd be like, oh, where's that video? Where is this video? And then videos disappear. And I'm like, I wish I had an animation. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make an app. And I wasn't even going to publish it. I just made it for myself. And I would show people. And I'd say, look, here's the sun goes around. Here's how seasons work. The sun moves in and out. And, uh, you know, and I, I would explain it. And they go, wow, where do I get that app? And I was like, well, I, I was like, okay, I published it. And it was free. And then people were like, hey, you know, could you add um, a frequently asked question section? So I add a, a frequently asked question section mm -hmm. and it links to videos that are being hidden because YouTube started hiding. Uh, you know, like if you Google Flat Earth, you're just going to get propaganda. Mm -hmm. Google Flat Earth, David Weiss, Google Flat Earth uh, proof, Flat Earth Horizons, Flat Earth Boats Over the Horizon. Anything that says Flat Earth or my name is going to lead you to the exact same results of all propaganda. That, that should make you question things. OK, so. Um, I had I added the frequently asked questions section. I added an images section where people um, where, where where people have quick access to stuff. And I'm actually just added a search feature, which isn't uh, isn't published yet. But you're gonna be able to search images by you know by keywords, um, and and it just gives people access when you're explaining to somebody because just like I'm doing in this podcast, it's a lot easier with some imagery, right? And all the questions you have, if you take the time to look, like um, day and night, if you go to the frequently asked questions, um, where does the sun go? Okay. That will explain in detail in multiple videos that YouTube is hiding from you. Interesting. Um, and it'll show you, it'll explain it. And then you can go out and make these observations yourself. Don't believe anything. Trust and test. I mean, test everything. But David, don't you believe that YouTube is hiding because we, people who believe in science, thinks or feels that the flat earth uh, theory is actually a well, fake propaganda. Well, that, see, here's the thing. They call, uh, they call flat earthers anti-science. We actually love science. You believe in pseudoscience. You believe the sun is 93 million miles away, and the way they got there was pseudoscience. So your belief is based on pseudoscience. That's a fact. That's not me criticizing you. I'm just telling you. The dis because the, the sun used to be 3 million miles away. Then it was 7 million miles away. Now it's 93 million miles away. And then during a, a recent eclipse a year or two ago, a whole bunch of amateur astronomers, honest people, they're like, hey, the, we did the math and the sun has to be farther than 93 million miles away. And it was this whole big thing online. And then all of a sudden it disappeared because if they change the distance of the sun, they have to change the distance and sizes of all of the planets. And then the moon landings couldn't have happened, which they didn't. And uh, everything falls apart. They squash that. Okay. You can't so even you find believe, that information so you anymore. The moon landing is a fake propaganda as well. That's, that's fake, the video. <laughs>
Yeah, and, uh, but you believe it's real, right? Absolutely. Okay, so but once again, that's, that's a whole not- I believe. I don't have a fact, as you said. You know, I am right, a right. scientist. So, so you you have a belief because a bunch of liars told you stuff. Now, when I say when I say liars, that that's a harsh statement. I'm going to show you that NASA is lying. I'm going to show you. But I'm um, just finish, finishing on the app. People yeah. think that flat that flat Earth is a um, uh, you know, dying because uh, if you look at the YouTube search results, uh, it, it's gone down because of the algorithm. People are searching for it, but you can't find it. You uh, flat Earth in 2017 actually became the number one search term on Google. And that's when they took down the scoreboard. You used to get, hey, let me search uh, this or that or Do- Donald Trump. And you say 47 million you know, results or whatever it is. And um, when Flat Earth beat Donald Trump in 2017, they literally took the scoreboard off of YouTube. You no longer get the number of results. The day it hit, they removed the scoreboard within a, within a couple of days. This is, these are the people that have my app, just some of them, that are on what I call the friend finder. And this is how... People can meet up with local people and have discussions and, and make groups and all sorts of stuff. It's it's a uh, it's a big deal, and um, the app does a ton a ton of other stuff. It feeds you um, all sorts of information that will that'll blow your mind. But again, the more resources page, um, tons of stuff. All my interviews, including yours, will be right here. Okay, okay. Um, as soon as it comes out, you, uh, the day you're watching this is the day it'll be up there. Um, and then there's all sorts of stuff like you, you see a, like Nat Geo debunking. I saw Nat Geo. They proved that the flat earthers are wrong and there was curvature on this lake. They were deceiving you and we expose it in the debunking the debunkers section. OK, now, now it's not us just saying it's fake. It's us showing you the trick like a magician does a trick. You're like, wow. And then someone shows you the trick. You're like, oh, I didn't see that. OK, we're showing you the trick. Tons and tons and tons of stuff. This will keep you busy forever. Just this section alone. There's a book section. There is um, uh, people selling flat earth stuff. Very cool. My t-shirts. If you like my, like my t-shirt, all my t-shirt shops right there. There's very cool stuff there. Um, this is the homeschooling section. If you have kids that are getting ready for college, save that money, buy them a house, send them to the, this section, send them to Crow University. That All they have to do is listen to one podcast a day, five days a week. And within a month, they'll be smarter than any college graduate. And it's all interesting, life affirming um, stuff, all stuff about our history. This one, my lunch break, amazing, blow your mind. Um, and then you'll start to see see this world um, that's been hidden from you. They literally hid this world from you. There's games on here. There's different languages, um, playlists. And, and then um, where can they find the app? And what's the price of the app? Or if you want to go in detail on that. Yeah, yeah, no, I will. The app is $3 one time charge. However, if you want to message people on the friend finder or um, use the game section, which w- w- it's going to be an interactive game where you could actually link up with people and, and all sorts of stuff. There's a subscription subscription for that, which is $11 a year. It's mm-hmm. like buying me a margarita and forgetting to tip the bartender. Um, but there's also a referral section here. Like people are like, I can't do it. I'm on my parents' account or whatever. Um, all you, you do is you create a uh, referral code. Mine is DITRH, stands for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Um, you put your referral code there. And then anybody that downloads the app, it'll ask if they have a referral code. They put in, hey, let me give uh, Sid, you know, I'll, I'll put for referral code Sid. If you want to make a referral code, go for it. And then um, when you have 11 or more, you can trade them in for a year subscription. And, you know, and the, there are other benefits will come with this, but it's kind of fun. You go on a leaderboard. Um, you know, people, people can see, uh, whoops, what happened there? Why is that doing that? Oh, there we go. Um, you can see the top 100 people referring kind of fun. Again, it's a whole community thing. Um, amazing, but all my stuff, my, uh, the app, um, our, our upcoming Flattoberfest in Las Vegas in October, um, uh, we're having a big convention in Las Vegas is all can be found at flatearthdave.com. FlatEarthDave.com. So you are actually um, a, a great voice for the Flat Earth community. I would say more powerful than the Flat Earth Society based on what your app is doing and where you're heading. You know, I'm a loud, I'm a loud voice. I'm definitely not the smartest, but I'm, uh, I'm you know, we all work together. I, I always say, you know, like when you say, what's the best part of vegetable soup? Well, you know, is it the celery? Is it the lettuce? Is it the, the, the carrots? Is it the potatoes? And the true answer is it's the water because the water lays flat, but it's all a big soup. Okay. And, uh, and I'm just compiling, I'm just 
breaking the YouTube algorithm. I'm speaking to people like yourself that believe they live in the globe. And, um, you know, you, you said, uh, you, you, you guys believe in science and you insinuated that we're science deniers, which is okay because that's what everybody assumes. Um, actually we hold science's feet to the fire. So your belief that the sun is far away, um, doesn't work because we can actually prove that it's not. And then, but and, you know, and so, the, you know how big the sun is. I mean, if it would be closer no, to the, we, to, to the, earth. we don't, we don't know how big the sun is. They're, they're assuming there it, it's all based on the, the transit of Venus being the same size as earth or, or across the sun. Now, if, if Venus is something else completely, um, which, which it is, you know, if you look, uh, if you look, I think I have a image of, of Venus. Um, this is Venus. This is what Venus really looks like. This is that. It look like a rocky planet. Okay. This is Venus. All right. This is something else. I used to laugh at astrology and, and I was huge into astronomy and astronomy is all pseudoscience. It's all assumptions based on false variables. Okay. I can do an equation. If you had a million dollars in the bank and I doubled it for three days, you'd have 2 million tomorrow, 4 million the next day and 8 million the next day. Therefore you have $8 million. In three days, you're going to have $8 million. What's the problem with that equation? You don't have a million dollars in the bank right now. Okay. So when you have one false piece of information, the sun is 93 million miles away. The sun is 186,000 miles across, right? Everything falls apart when you realize there's no scientific science is the important part. Um, there's no scientific basis then for that. How, do you, right? how can you prove that the sun is closer? And do you know what's the distance of the sun from the earth? We don't, we don't know. So, um, you know, in the, in the frequently asked questions page, as I said, where does the sun go? There's some great videos um, showing about how it's impossible to triangulate the sun because the sun that we see is in, a, is in an apparent position. And I'll show you what I mean by that. And, you know, when you're driving down the road, you know, when you're a kid, um, you say, hey, the moon is following me. And your mom said, oh, no, it's not. You know, it's just so far away. That's a belief, right? But I believe that the moon is um, much closer. So let me, where is my, there it is, sheet sky. All right. So here I have a room and I, I dropped, a, a, um, I split the room in half with a blue sheet. And 10 feet on the other side, I have a flashlight, which is actually a square lens, but it looks round. Interesting how things all become round in the distance, right? And I have Paige to the left of me and I say, where do you see the sun? It's cheap points. It's right there from her point of view. So I put a little X on the, on the sheet. That X is over there. At the same time, I'm looking at the sun over here. Okay. So we're seeing the sun, the same sun in an apparent position. So if we tried to triangulate it, it wouldn't work. We'd get a, we'd get a wrong information on where it is because that, that's how we see the sun. Well, I have a counter to that. When you are looking at an object, when, when, you, when your stationary is different, but the objects change its shape when you move. That's just. I'm not moving. I'm just looking at, look at the sun. It, it's right there, you know, and, and, and before, before I'm sure you're going to ask, or the audience is going to be like, what about Aristophanes and, uh, and, you know, and his uh, sticks and shadows, right? Do you know, you know, the story of Aristophanes? I have, I have heard you talk about them in your, in your previous videos as well. Right. So, you know, they, they say that Aristophanes did his famous sticks and shadows experiment, um, and that, you know, that proved that the, that the earth was a sphere, you know, and Carl Sagan on his Cosmos series, um, you know, he's like, the only way it could work is, you know, where there were these two towers right now on this flat earth, they don't have a shadow the, but if you bend it, one of them has a shadow and then you can make the other one not have a shadow. He says that only works on a flat earth. What's wrong with that equation? You're assuming the sun is at an, what we call an infinite distance, 93 million miles, right? So here it works. You got your shadow. You got your no shadow. You can, you can measure the shadow, measure the distance between these two things, and you could figure out how big that sphere would be if you bent that cardboard all the way around, okay? So that's true, and uh, it works, but here's the problem. Here is, uh, you know, and, and Aristophanes had to believe that the sun rays were coming in parallel, but no one's ever seen parallel sun rays. You always see crepuscular rays, okay? And we could do the same thing with a small local sun. Here's Aristophanes, 500 miles away. Here's his buddy. And the sun is causing a shadow here, no shadow here. We could do the same math and figure out the sphericity of this flat plane, 
right? If this is on a table, and this is something that you can just do. Uh, you can do it in your, on your home, you know, just get two beer bottles and put a light above one of them, no shadow. And you got a shadow over here. You can do math to figure out the sphericity of your floor and you can call that science. Okay. But, but that's well, pseudoscience. That, isn't that an angle? If you put a bottle here and look from the top, Versus if you look at the bottom from the side with the light on the top, of course, it's going to show a shadow on, on the angle. Absolutely. So so you just admitted that Aristophanes experiment, if he actually ever did it, doesn't prove either. It doesn't prove it works on a globe Earth with a distant sun and it works on a flat Earth with a local sun. So it doesn't prove either. But that's that's pseudoscience when you say it proves something and it doesn't. It, you, know, you, 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 you have to have all of the variables um, in play. So again, you know, a light is above this, no shadow, shadow over here. You can do math and figure out the sphericity of this floor. That's not science, that's pseudoscience. Okay. So I, I want to ask you now a couple of things. Uh, once again, you know, the problems that I have with the flat earth theory and model. So, so let me ask you now, how do you explain sunrises and sunsets when where only half the sun is visible? As per you guys, the sun would recede high in the sky and get smaller and smaller until it fades away. That's what the explanation I have heard, even yourself uh, on this. So, so, so take it away from here, please. Dave. So, so I'm sure you've seen it, but I'm going to show it for your listeners. And uh, it's a great question. And, and this, that's actually one of my favorite flat earth proofs is sunsets. It actually proves the earth is flat. And, um, you have to understand how perspective works. And if you check out my channel, D I T R H on YouTube, find it at flat earthdave.com. If you forget it. And, um, and then I have all short videos here. I have tons and tons on sunsets in the app. I have, um, uh, you know, where does the sun go on the frequently asked questions page? And I also have the sun fade outs, which I'm going to show you in a moment, but it's all about perspective. So here I have my flat earth kitchen. I got my counter here and I have, uh, this could be a city skyline. It could be a forest, uh, mountains, or just a cloud deck or whatever, but I got my path of the sun and I'm moving it across this level line. Now we're looking at it from a celestial point of view uh, above the above the atmosphere point of view i have a camera on the flat earth counter at the other end and we're going to watch what that camera saw from just from a terrestrial point of view and when i show you this line i would say does this line go down you'd be like absolutely does and i go does this sun go below this thing here and you'd be like absolutely does and this thing actually looks like it's at eye level right put a little farther in distance it'll you you would absolutely swear it's at eye level this is a level line but we see it going down just like we see the sun and the sun disappears from the bottom up. Now let's compare that to a real sunset. Here's my sun going away across this level line. Here's the sun going away and it's going behind. What is this? Wait a minute. I thought the horizon was here. What's this? Is that clouds? Is that a mountain? Or is that the, just what I call the atmospheric deck of opacity? It becomes your horizon. If I zoomed out on this picture this line and this line would merge together and the sun is just going beyond it beyond it's not going behind it's not going behind i mean below it's going beyond and the light can't get there so we're taught that light can go but Dave, for... i have a problem with this model based on your kitchen oh. video that you're doing you're doing on a flat earth you, you were taking the earth like this and you have the sun going up in a line like this and of course you the can sun's level. See. I have it going yeah. level. Yeah. Level. So you can only see so far. You know, that's right. that's just common. Now, when the earth is round, you know, if the if the sun say sunset, right? If the sun sets this way, then this side becomes light, right? Why is that one side of the earth there is nighttime? Why is that the other side of the earth there is daytime? Right? You cannot because have that on flat earth unless once yes, again, you can. unless yes, you can. Unless the sun recedes so far away, it becomes so smaller, the light is barely reachable to that part of the world. So we're taught that light travels for billions and billions of years. And the stars that we're looking at could have burned out billions of years ago. And the light is just traveling. That's actually pseudoscience. It's scientifically provable that can't be true. But light doesn't travel that far, especially through atmosphere. Like if you go in an Olympic sized swimming pool, water, water is perfectly clear. Go on one end of the pool and go underneath with goggles and look at the other end. You can't see the other end because the, the, the thickness of the water becomes opaque over distance. Air does the same thing, even on a cloudless day. Speaking of cloudless days, let me show you my sun so fade again, out. That's a good point, is the density. So the space is huge. That's the whole point, right? 
Well, the, well, the, 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 the earth is huge. So let's talk yes. about it. So, so again, the sun that we see is relative to our position. This, this gets, there's, there's hours and hours and hours of videos you can watch to really let this soak in. But so when you're watching a sunset, usually you're watching it over water. Usually it's pretty warm because that's why you're outside and there's moisture in the air and, uh, and there, there's waves on the water, swells on the water, and all of that contributes to the sunset. But on a cold winter day, it was below 30 degrees, 32 degrees, it was below free, just below freezing. Um, I put my drone up on a, it was a, what I call a 9-11 clear day, super clear, clear day. And I watched the sunset and here it is. This is from, from Connecticut looking West. Now the sun was up here going down, down, down. Now if we're spinning, it should just keep on going, but it didn't. It went down, 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 down. And then it stopped right here. And this is sped up like 25 times. Okay. It just stopped and sat there. My friends at the beach over here, it's dark already. The sun already set from the bottom up from them, but I'm still watching the sun. I'm still watching it from my drone. And because all of a sudden, the height. that's the thing. Well, right? uh, but, but look at it. Did it go below or did it go away? Watch over here. I'll show you again. It's just going into the soup of the atmosphere. It's light cannot make it. I have, all I have never seen such thing in my entire existence of this, my own life. And, and I was I accused. That. I was accused of that with CGI, so I live streamed it. I filmed it seven different times on the app. There's a whole section on this, and other people have filmed it now too. The reason you haven't seen it, let me ask a question: Have you ever watched the sunset from a high uh, altitude with a 4K drone when it's below freezing? No, you haven't. That's no. why. How many other people have done that? Okay, not many, not many, but more and more people are doing it now. Okay. And when you go up higher, you can see farther on a flat Earth. You know, people say, well, up higher, you can see farther on a globe Earth. I should be able to go up and see the sun rise again, but it doesn't. The sun disappears into the thickness. So that brings us to the same question about, about um, distances, okay? And um, let me show you this one, and uh, maybe this will help. So um, where is it? All right, so so... Do you see me right now, or do you see the light that's bouncing off of me? You see the light that's bouncing off of me. We can prove that by doing a scientific experiment. Turn off all the lights in this room, and then you won't see me. Okay? So we can claim everything we see has light coming off of it, whether it's reflecting light or it is its own source of light. The sun is its own source of light. A light bulb is its own source of light. But I see the wall over there, and that's getting reflected light. You with me? Make sense? No. Right. Okay. So you got to you got to think these things through. So here's a spot in Illusia, France, um, where the sun, where out here is Mount Canigo. It's 175 miles away. Using the globe Earth curve calculator, uh, it would say that the top of Mount Canigo from this spot should be over a half a mile below the horizon. So a globe believer would say, well, this is the horizon. So the top of Mount Canigo can't be seen. The truth is the light that's bouncing off of Mount Canigo can't push through all of that atmosphere and make it to your eyes. It's still there. You just can't see it. However, there's a brighter light in the sky that can push through that amount of atmosphere. And twice a year, when the sun migrates in between its tropics, twice a year, it lines up with that viewing spot and Mount Canigou. And when it does, it backlights the mountain and you can see the whole mountain. Now, this is not a mirage, but a globe believer will want you to believe that the sun is already set the mountain is already below the horizon and it's magically lifting up and stopping at eye level. When the truth is, it's right there all the time. You can only see it on these couple of days where the sun lines up with it, but this is not a mirage. The top of this mountain should be over a half a mile below the curve, but it's not, all right? Let me show you one more because this is important. This is an important one to take in. If the earth is curved, there is required to be a limit of your vision due to curvature, right? Here's right. a curvature. My mouth is behind this curvature. You can't see it. You can zoom in, makes no difference because there's a physical curve. And you know they say the earth is so big, you can't see, but they want you to believe you can see boats go over the horizon, right? They want their cake and eat it too. According to Earth Curve Calculator, at three miles, there's a six foot drop. That means a six foot tall person standing at the edge of perfectly calm water on a perfectly clear day perfectly calm, no waves, no fog, no nothing. 
the farthest they can see the surface of the water is three miles because the water will be dipping below that. And if they sat down, it's going to be closer than three miles, okay? Because they're lower. And the curve calculator says, it's well, it's less than three miles. But we all know that we can go out and we can see boats way past three miles. We can see the sun where it looks like it's intersecting with the water. That's not three miles away. That is 50 miles away or whatever, whatever, whatever you see. And if there's fog, that horizon comes closer. If there's waves, that lifts the water up and hides the horizon and brings a false horizon even closer. Okay. So here we have, um, this is a spot from, and when you're down on the water, as I said earlier, everything's thick, but from the top of a mountain, the air is clearer and you can, and thinner, and you can see farther. So here is um, a spot where we can see eight mountains, all of the, now if you saw one, you could say, well, it's not a mountain, it's a, it's a cloud, all of the mountains in the right shapes, right places, they're all there. This is verified, and you can go verify this yourself, um, 700 miles plus. That means that there's 40 miles of curvature missing. The tops of these mountains, should be 40 miles below a physical curve, but we can see them. Mainstream science will ignore this. They will not address this because they can't, because there's only two conclusions. One, the Earth is thousands of times bigger than they tell us it is. That's a problem. Or it's flat. Now, do you know the distance of uh, from one side to the other through our center? What is the distance? Give me a number. I don't know the number. I, I, I don't know the number, but... You know, Give when it's when around seven thousand nine hundred and twenty six miles. So you're you, basing that you're basing that on the transit of Venus across the sun. That's what you're basing that number on. You're basing that on the radius and nobody knows the radius, but you can make up a radius and then you can calculate everything else you want to to fit that. They literally backward engineered the 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 um, the flat Earth and wrapped it around a sphere and made you think you live on a sphere when that's not nearly the truth. So, so you think the pictures of the Earth that we saw, I think 1969, I forgot the, the mission that was carried out, before any alteration software came in existence where you can Photoshop and do this, you think all of that was just a baloney? So great question. We're going to transit to that next. But just I want you not to hand wave dismiss this. There's no other explanation for this. And at the, I have another proof that's going to blow your mind. Well, okay? the thing is, when the Earth is round, if you look at this, for example, if you look at the Mount Everest peak, right, from distance, it appears like this. It's so closer. But the closer you go, the higher the peak becomes. Why is that? Because of the curve of the sphere. It's a sphere, right? 100% not. It's all, it's all perspective. It's hijacking the curve perspective Um so we can say the same about about you when you brought up. No, you can't. Point. No, you can't. No, you can't. Because we can see these mountains. Explain that. For they, the, the tops of the mountains should be 40 miles below a physical curve. You can't explain it. And when you can't explain it, what our minds have been trained to do. You are at a 700 feet. You're looking at it from 700 feet before this slide. You were it, at 700 what, the, feet. The curve calculator takes in elevation. So if you're higher, it calculates that elevation. Yes. It, it, it's the correct Earth curve calculator, and it's and it's uh, accurate up to like two or three thousand miles. We're only talking seven hundred miles here. We can see all of these mountains. There is no other explanation other than the Earth is a ball, and it's thousands of times bigger than they're telling us. That's a problem. Okay. So you want to talk about the images and before Photoshop. Um, that's because you believe that we're at the peak of civilization and technology when the truth is we are literally in the middle of the movie Idiocracy and all of this technology has been hidden from us. But these are all from NASA. Which one do you like? Because if one of them is fake or nine of them or eight of them are fake, they're all fake. OK, and these are all from NASA. Which one do you like the best? OK, so here's here's my thing. Check this out. So in 1927. Uh, Universal Pictures came out with this spinning globe for their movie. And then in 1972, we got the first real picture of real picture. You know, NASA went up and it happened to match perfectly. How did they know? How did I they know? It was it 1969. I forgot the name of okay. the movie. Oh, All right, whatever. But the, the, the picture, how, how did they know? Um, how did they know what it looked like in 1927 when no one had ever been up there? This is NASA's uh, number one photo of Earth. Okay. In 2012, it was taken. Okay. Here's the United States. You got Baja, Mexico, Florida, right? Here's the United States. What's the problem with this picture? 
Do you see a problem with this picture? This is from NASA. Okay. You don't see a problem. Here's the Mercator map. Okay. So it's the globe splayed out flat, right? Not only did they just cut it out, they used the same frigging colors from, from this map. Okay. Now here's the problem. This is what they're showing us. When we're looking at this photo from this far away, this is like a million miles away. Okay. You're looking at half of the globe. That means that all of this other land is on the other side of this globe. That is why okay? it's a globe. How does all of this other land fit on the other side of this globe when the United States is taking up half of this side? Is the United uh, States... Look, here's the thing. This is where your mind short circuits. It doesn't make sense. This... This right here proves this is not a photo and that it's a painting, okay? It proves it, right? But your, your mind is like, no, no, it, it can't. It can't be. It can't be, right? Well, you understand the earth is huge. The earth is big, right? It doesn't matter. Look at this. This is a photo. You, you want to you say that photos are, are, are proof. That photo, how uh, is the rest of this land on the other side of this ball? Right? Because so, you are fixated on this specific picture. That's what I'm saying. You showed me nine pictures out of which you picked one picture and you are making a case on that one picture that why United okay. States of America takes so much space. Where what about this one? What about this one? How come the United States takes less space? You're looking how at come, the how, how did they change one size? A, one, you can see. This one is an angle from the front where you can see the whole globe. If you look on the right, you can see at least 65 to 75% with mm -hmm. the other side of the curve in dark. Why? Because it's on an angle. It's, 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 as simple. it's physics. You know, this is just simple so, physics. So, so look at my hand. My hand is this size. If I tip right. it back, it's getting smaller. And you are also changing the And this one is tipped the... back. This one is more forward. This one one should be smaller this one should be bigger if you want to claim that but you're you're just making excuses right now for something that you know just doesn't make sense it, it doesn't make sense at all um so i'm trying to find uh, another image for you that that you'll like hopefully um well, this is the of, blue marble uh, what's that this is the blue marble a different image of the earth and all these clouds are photoshopped okay so you know robert simmons why the you, nasa why do you think these clouds are photoshopped what makes it because it's made in Photoshop? It's made in how Photoshop. Do, how do you know? Do you have you because used the guy that made it that works at NASA, his name is Robert Simmon, admitted that he was just fed data and he made it to look like what people would want it to look like. The guy from NASA outright admits that he made it in Photoshop. And what he also said, I use Command Z a lot. Okay. And so he made it in Photoshop. So you got the guy that made it admitting that it's, uh, that that that's it and um and you still want to defend it which one of these do you like well as you said there are plenty of pictures to look at right we have millions and millions of pictures and the point comes back to the google you we know, have millions and millions of pictures nasa doesn't have millions and millions of pictures nasa has like two pictures okay uh, that, that they want to what, that, about that they, the, what about the pictures that we see on uh, live from the space when they are outside uh, on the space where you can see the Proper sphere picture of the globe Earth, right? We, yes. we we call it globe. Go ahead, explain me that. So well, you're saying so, that our eyes are playing tricks on that? No, they're playing tricks with green screens on you. That's what they're doing. Um, you're so, trying to debunk the whole science science here. You know, you you don't get me wrong, but this is the same way. Like you know what? You're going against the science based on. Once again, there is no proof. As I said, yes, you talked about the NASA, the the NASA guy who did so, that, which I which I would love to look. So into. hold on, NASA gets seventy one million dollars every single day, okay? And this they show you stuff like this. Is this real? Is this real? Is this really what the globe looks like from the cupola? And I'm in the cupola. I I would say so. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's not. This is from a, a drone. I. Photoshopped it. I didn't Photoshop it. I just put a green screen and here I am. This is not real. This is not real, but you believe it because you're seeing it. Okay. Uh, take away the cupola. Okay. 
This is not real, right? And if you measure the, this curvature, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work at all, right? So uh, I, I, I have something for you. So here is, um, where is it? Wrong size. Well, there is there is an equatorial bulge of the Earth. You know that, now, right? That, what, I mean so wait, the equatorial bulge is 14 miles high. There's an equatorial bulge of water 14 miles high. Explain to me why Africa is not underwater. David, you're talking about water. I'm talking about the bulge of the earth. And, and I know why you use the 14 mile because that is the difference of the earth from the equator to the North Pole. The diameter of the earth is about 27 miles greater at the equator. So what you are saying is a 14 mile water bulge theory that you're saying is in fact, the equatorial burst of the earth, not the so. Water. So hold on a second. Hold on a second. You're reading that from a textbook. It's based on the transit of Venus crossing the sun, assuming Venus is the size of Earth. You are quoting pseudoscience from proven liars. Here's but a shot from the space station on Venus. Well, because Venus right? Venus is the one that they use to determine the distance of the sun, and they 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 assumed Venus is the same size as Earth. Okay, these this is pure pseudoscience. I so keep going back to that ever. because everything that you're saying is based on a, a pre assumed um, David, assumption. Do you agree the Earth is stationary and all the planets orbit around the Earth? Uh, sorry, the Sun is stationary and all the planets orbit around the Sun. Do you agree or disagree? disagree you disagree yeah okay so you are saying that the earth does not revolve around the the sun and usually it's a one-year cycle that's the whole time it takes for an earth to go around the sun yeah so you're saying you disagree to this whole thing the elliptical or you disagree to the 100 percent. all of it the earth doesn't you, move you the sun circles the around orbit. absolutely 100 percent Hundred okay, so, percent. And so if you look at, a, if you research the analemma, you'll see that uh, that it shows how it goes on a flat Earth. Just remember that picture. You said I was fixated on that picture, United States. Well, we got another picture from NASA, which shows the other side of the Earth, and it, it's just this. So all of this now should be on the other side. If you can't see the deception here, I can't help you. Okay, I've shown you both sides of the Earth. They don't match up with the other side of the Earth. They're paintings. That's it. Okay. They're paintings. I, I understand that is your belief. I, I completely well. So that. wait. So where's the rest of the? Where's the rest of this land on the other side? Because when I showed you this on the other side, you said all of this was on the other side. Where's Russia? Where's Russia? Russia on this side of the earth. It's on the other side. But I showed you the other side of the earth, and and you said no. I'm I'm fixated. On that, on that one side, right? Well, I'm, there, I'm fixing on lot, that one picture. There can be a lot of Photoshop pictures put up by flat Earth or believers as well. That's my counter to that. Well, uh, no, no, we don't have any photos Earth. of Earth. We don't have any photos of Earth. You have ones given to you by liars that you call NASA. Here's the other side again, right? All of this should be on the other side. But when I showed you, it's not. You you just say that we have fake pictures of Earth. We don't have any pictures of Earth. You can't take a picture of the flat Earth. But you do believe the Earth is flat. Because it's testably, measurably, scientifically, provably flat without looking up into the sky or trusting but pictures from NASA. Said, you just said you don't believe in science. You, you, and you, no, 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 no. I pulled science at its feet to the fire. I don't believe in pseudoscience. I believe you use pseudoscience, which you've only been using here. Okay. But you haven't stated any actual science we can go out and measure the curvature of the tires on your car but nobody can measure the curvature of earth i showed you pictures showing that there is no curvature photos that you can verify yourself okay and there's tons of these We've, we have videos and photos um there's a whole section on the app about flat earth tests we went out and did all the tests for you you can look at it verify it yourself and go out and do it yourself if you want but we show that there's no curvature there's no curvature based on the radius that they tell us but David, you also say that there is no gravity, and then tell me. I mean, at the earth of the at the center of the earth, there is gravity which pulls and attracts everything to its center. So if Earth is flat, I can I can quote this flat earthers say that there is no gravity. They believe in the acceleration 
the had of at havoc reasonings, the acceleration and all that. Sid, you know, Sid, you're believing what Google fed you. No flat earther believes that. No flat. You're claiming a pseudoscience claim of gravity because gravity is a theory, and I could prove it. And you're also claiming a flat earth belief that no flat earther believers does. So you're double suit. You're double dipping on straw manning. You're straw man. No, no. You're shaking your head. No. You said flat earthers believe that we're accelerating. Nope. No flat earther believes that. Okay. Oh. You said that gravity pulls everything to the center. And you're about to say if the earth was flat, you'd have to lean forward as you walk towards the edge because you've been programmed with that by a guy named Vsauce. All right. No flat earther believes that. You want to talk about gravity? Let's talk about gravity. Go for it. Okay, so high pressure next to low, no pressure or low pressure can never happen without a physical barrier. If I asked you, to, hey, let's have a barbecue tonight, go get some propane, but don't use a tank. Just bring me the propane. Can't do it because gas violently fills the available space. Okay, so you need a container to have high pressure next to low pressure. We have an earth surrounded by water, surrounded by air, adjacent to a void of no pressure, which we call space. Okay, what is stopping the air? from violently filling the space. And your answer is going to be gravity is holding the air down. Gravity holds the air down, but I could hold my arms up. A summer breeze can blow air left and right. A helium balloon will go up. I can, you know, it, it gravity is holding it down. But here's the question. How do clouds go up? Clouds weigh more than air. You know, the, the water, water particles weigh more than air. Why do they float up in the sky? Why doesn't gravity pull them down? And there's an answer. It's because they're held up electrostatically. And I'm going to explain that uh, further. So just remember, gravity is a theory that needs 96% of it made up. Hey, Sid, lend me $100. So you hand me $100. Thank you so much. And I say, hey, I'm going to pay you back. Here's $4. And you'd be like, whoa, Dave, $4? So, you, so you're saying you don't believe in tides? No tides. Okay, because... Wait a minute. Well, well, let's go to tides next. I absolutely believe in tides. I don't believe they're caused by gravity. Okay. So, so I pay you $4 and I say, Hey, we're all set. And you're like, wait a minute. Where's the other $96? I'm like, Oh, that's dark dollars. And, uh, and, uh, you know, d dark dollars. They're, they're there. You can't see them. You can't measure them. No one's ever seen them, but they have to be there. Cause I paid you a hundred dollars back. Right. That's gravity. Gravity is 96% of it. It's gone. It doesn't work. So they say, Oh, dark energy and dark matter make up 96% of the universe because without it, gravity doesn't work. Well, guess what? Gravity doesn't work. Right. They, they want you to think that flat earthers are crazy that think down is down everywhere, but they want you to think this is normal because everyone stands antipodal to each other on opposite sides of the earth, and they're all being sucked towards the center of the earth. Some molecule at the center of the earth goes, I am the ultimate center. Everybody must come to me. But what about some other molecule, maybe halfway between the center and the surface, goes, no, I'm the center. Why doesn't everything come to me? No, only the center has the gravity. So you have this magical gravity that pulls everything to the center that's 96% made up of dark matter. It doesn't work, right? Our solar system is a beehive of bodies. And even when they all line up, they don't never tug on each other and everything works perfectly like a fine watch because all watches are based on the sky clock, right? Jupiter, so they tell us it has more gravity than all of the other planets combined in our solar system, but Jupiter is made of helium and hydrogen, which defy gravity here on Earth. How much helium and hydrogen do you need for it to finally collapse upon itself and create more gravity? That's pure pseudoscience nonsense. So what is gravity if it's not, all right? So here's a question. I got this balloon here, and it's just hanging down. Why is it hanging down? It's hanging down because gravity in your world. How come gravity isn't stretching it? How come it isn't stretching it? Because, because you need a force to stretch it. Force and gravity are two different things. Okay. But, but if I hung a 10-pound weight on it, it would stretch it. How can a 10-pound weight stretch it? Well, if, if I hung a 10-pound... No, no. I'm talking about your world, gravity. Yeah, yeah. Why, is, why isn't this thing flopping upwards? in your world gravity to so say it you can say it yeah absolutely okay okay so gravity has the ability to pull this down so i put air in it now what's this air trying to do it's trying to escape in every direction including up if i poke the hole in the top whoosh, the air is going to go up it's going to violently fill the space okay so gravity is, ha is having a hard time with that so let's let's look at um you know, so 
here's Walter um, Walter uh, Lewin from MIT. He says it's electrical forces that hold our world together. Okay, it's electrical forces that hold our world together. So let's put that to the test, right? So we have um, you've seen you know static charges. You know things defy gravity because of static charges, right? Here's a quick uh, a quick example. So. The way we think the world works is we live in this giant electrical system. We're electrical beings. The ground is neutral. The sun and the moon are the anode and cathode. The salt water carries the current, has to do with tides, and the land is the salt bridge, and that creates this free energy system. Positives and negatives attract. We know that. The earth is stationary. It does not move. It holds the negative charge. So, so nothing um, – so the earth isn't going to move. So – Anything that's on the earth has that negative charge and anything above the earth is surrounded by a positive charge. Here we have some leftover helium balloons. We have a button just taped on the end here and it's neutrally buoyant a couple inches above the floor. This wire goes to a Van de Graaff generator. We're gonna add just a positive charge here. We're not changing the density. We're not adding weight. We're just adding a positive charge. And when we do, it gets heavier, it goes down. So we're manipulating gravity or the electrostatic attraction, right? Discharge, it goes back up. What happens if we do the other, if we, if we do a negative charge? So we got a negative charge here. We put a negative charge in this tinfoil and it goes up. If we, if we put a negative charge into it and keep it in it, it goes up, right? This wire is putting a negative charge in it. Is it defying gravity or is it defying an electrostatic force, right? Here's another thing from MIT. It's called the silent drone. No moving parts. Nothing. All they do is change the electrostatic charge of it and it can fly and it can maneuver. Is it defying gravity or is it defying the electrostatic force? Now think about this. They tell us, science tells us that the electrostatic force is 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity. That's a number that you can't even fathom. Okay. They tell us gravity is a weak force. Okay. Let's pretend it is. And electrostatics, which I just tested and verified is 10 to the 36 power stronger. If I drop something, how could you assume that it's gravity, which is a fictional made up force versus a testable force, 10 to the 36 power. If I was in that room and I punched you this hard, would it hurt? No, but if I punch you 10 times harder, it might hurt. If I punch you a hundred times farther, it would really hurt. If I punch you a thousand times farther, you'd go flying across the room a million times far harder, you'd go through the wall, you'd be dead. A billion times harder, it would probably explode like a bomb, right? And a trillion times harder, can't even fathom what would happen. I'd probably blow up the whole state that you're in. That's a force that you can't even imagine. That's 10 to the 15th power. Your science, pseudoscience, tells us that, that the electrostatic force is 10 to the 36th power stronger than gravity. That's your science. You're gravitational globalists. I can show you that things fly because of electrostatics. When lightning strikes, things go flying because the, gr the ground changes its charge for a split second and things go flying. During electrical storms, things fall at a different rate because the electrostatic charge is changed. People weigh different amounts at day and night. They should weigh less during a full moon, but they don't, okay? Because gravity is baloney and this electro system that we work in, that we live in, is what is responsible for all of this. Sorry so for the long rant, but so it was so interesting. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. I'm just saying, so yeah. you're telling me you're standing on, standing on your two feet because not of gravity on the ground? Not because why of gravity, you, because of the electro, electrostatic force. Then why are you not flying up? Because there's a constant flow, measurable, testable flow of energy down from the sky, the positive sky, down to the earth. That's the... That's the electrostatic flow and everything that's in it will follow that except the helium balloon because that has a different charge to it and it goes up. Okay. Because Electrostatics the air, is the secret the space air program. It rises to the top. The gravity. Why do cars drive on the road? Because why, why the those, electrostatic the force, because, they're, because, because metal has a higher positive charge than air. Air has positive charge. OK, and each each, you know, if you believe in the periodic table, each heavier element has a higher positive charge. OK, the positive charge is attracted to the ground, change the charge and it changes its weight. OK, we're not screwing with gravity. We're, we're screwing with electricity and magnetism. <clears throat> Our brother and sister, we have a um, we have maglev trains. We don't have anti-gravity trains. We have maglev trains. 
We have things that can fly because of electrostatics, not because of anti-gravity. So when you defy something that makes you fly, what is it? Electrostatics or gravity? Gravity made up, electrostatics proven. We're using electrostatics. We're, we're defying electrostatics. Gravity is their God. Without it, their entire world falls apart. Without the radius of the earth, their entire world falls apart. All of the globe is based on pseudoscience. So then let me ask you why no one has ever successfully predicted solar eclipses on flat earth or calculated the observed motions of the planet. And, and as a result of which, the hypothesis of flat earth was abandoned thousands of years ago. Whereas, I, I'm just going to give you the exact date and time. August 21st, 2017, there was the total solar eclipse in the United States. That was based on Kepler's law, which... Three law. I mean, if you want, I can tell you all the three laws. Based on that, why is that on a globe Earth, solar or lunar eclipses are predicted and are never wrong? And why it has never in the history of flat Earther has ever been predicted? Where'd you and, learn? And, where'd you hear that? Where'd you hear that? Well, I, I did my research. I, I, I did my research pretty happy. You, 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 you're reading stuff in textbooks from known liars. The truth is, have you ever heard of the Antikythera mechanism? I have not. So the Antikythera mechanism was discovered underwater off, the, off of Greece, um, and it was over 2,000 years old. And it was this, this weird thing. So they did MRIs on it and, and stuff, and they rebuilt it, and it predicts eclipses, motions of some of the planets, um, you know, the position of the sun and the moon, and it's based on a flat Earth. It's over 2,000 years old. They want you to believe that we've known the Earth as a globe for 2,000 years since Aristophanes, which I proved to be not true. I think it's a made-up story. I think Aristophanes might have been real. But can you prove that Newton's law of gravitation is also not true? Yes, because we prove that it is true. I mean, you're claiming something, um, and we can we can defy it with electrostatics. Why would electrostatics change gravity? Right? If I just change the charge of something, it still has the weight. Why isn't it going down? Why is it going up? Okay, it, it completely one hundred percent destroys it. Here's the thing. On the app, in the homeschool section, go to Schooling Globers, go to the gravity, gravity section, and listen to that course. Just that. That one alone will teach you that uh, uh, gravity is literally the glue that they have, and it doesn't even work, right? But to say that, uh, you know, that, that we um, believe that, that all cultures believe that, absolutely not. All cultures before us were flat earth cultures. As a matter of fact, if you check out my interview with Ruth, a 102-year-old woman back in 2020, um, she was taught in Connecticut public school that the earth was flat back in the 1920s, okay? They were still teaching flat earth here up to the 1950s. They were teaching both, flat and globe. They didn't know. And then all of a sudden, the Rockefellers took over the education system or the indoctrination system, and they removed the Gleason's map. They removed everything to do with flat earth and they made it like it doesn't even exist. Flat Earth, Globe Earth is new. The only religious cult is NASA and all of the other space agencies combined. They all work together um, on deceiving people. And that's what it's all about. You know, Admiral Byrd went out to Antarctica and um, he's found more land bigger than the United States filled with resources. And they're like, oh, nobody can go there. All the countries in the world all of a sudden can agree on that while they're fighting for everything else. Nobody can go to Antarctica. We're going to the moon. And now we have all of these fake moon missions um, it's it's pathetic that people are that far lost. So right? David, let me ask you then, if the Earth was flat, then why would two people see different directions of the stars in terms of clockwise and, and anti uh, counterclockwise? The reason I'm saying is yes. because if you're at the North Pole looking at the, sorry, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere looking at the North Pole, the star, stars rotate counterclockwise, right? If you're in the Southern Hemisphere at the South Pole, stars rotate clockwise, which is known as Polaris, right? So why, if the Earth was flat, you would see two people standing this far apart, different, not direction, the clockwise motion of the stars? Why can't they see the same stars at the same time? So here I am in the North. I'm looking at the North Star. And I see all the stars go around and they, well, I'll go this way. They go around, they go counterclockwise. So I'm going, I'm drawing a counterclockwise circle. Okay. Right. So now my friend is all the way over there and they're looking at the, they're looking North because they're in the South and they're seeing it go 
clockwise. Clockwise, but it's the same direction. Look, clockwise and But we are not talking about direction. We are not talking, we're talking about the rotation. rotation no, no, we're talking about, it's a, a, all, all sun, star, and moon, no matter where you are on the earth, rise in the south. All right, right, sorry, rise in the east, set in the west. No matter where you are, they rise in the east. So I'm looking, I'm looking north of the one way and the stars are rising up my right side, over my head, down my left side. That's counterclockwise. Somebody over there turned around, they're going to see the stars rise up off their left over the right and that's counterclockwise. It switches directions because you just turned around. That's it. If you draw a circle clockwise and tell somebody across the room, are you going clockwise or counterclockwise? And they'll tell you it's counterclockwise. It's the same direction. It's all your point of view. When you turn around, it's counterclockwise, period. Okay? Well, so here's the other thing. The lights well, in the sky the have nothing to do with the shape of the point. earth. The lights in the sky, the movement. So here's the thing. Here's your claim. All my senses feel like I'm not moving because I'm too small. The earth is too big. Um, all my senses feel like I'm not moving. All my senses tell me that all the lights in the sky are moving. Therefore, But, but I have to believe that, uh, uh, that I'm moving and they're all stationary. Flat earthers go out. We see the stars move. Yes, the stars moving. The sky is moving, right? We're in this beehive, crazy, insane um, solar system, right? We're in this crazy solar system moving in, in four different directions at once, all the stars, all the planets, but somehow every year, they all the stars put themselves in the exact same position. Go out tonight, take a picture of the stars, put a note in your calendar to do the same thing, same time, same night, next year, and every single star will be in the same exact position. But meanwhile, we traveled four and a half billion miles while all the other stars are moving in their own directions, while the galaxy is spinning, but somehow all the stars reset. We'll have planetary alignments where gravity, you know, gravity is pulling on each other, but nothing gets pulled out of whack. The sun is holding on to Venus, Mercury, and Mars, and Jupiter, and Pluto, and holds on to all of them, but it ignores all of the moons because the gravity from those closer planets are holding the moons. When the, when the moon comes around the Earth towards the sun, how come it doesn't speed up? How come the sun doesn't pull it away? When it pulls away from the sun, how come it doesn't slow down, right? These are all just well, it's too close. You know, the, the sun's gravity is negated because the moon, a quarter of a million miles away from the earth, uh, has control of the moon. It's ridiculous. Pseudoscience. It's made up stories for adults. <laughs> David, this, this is, uh, you know what, this has been really fun. I really, I really enjoyed uh, <laughs> our conversation here, you know. I mean, I, I respect your views, your opinion, but once again, I, I, for, I stay firm on my ground which right, I so believe. what is your best what is your best proof that the earth is a globe before we wrap it up well i i just told you i mean the the earth is just a one globe. just one you're if you, someone said give me one proof the earth is a globe what's your favorite well as i said i gave you the example of eclipse i gave you the example of there is a there is a horizontal axis on the earth same thing if you're standing in the northern hemisphere looking at the north pole you see the stars rotate counterclockwise whereas on the south pole they rotate clockwise because if you're on a globe with the horizontal uh, axis like this and if you're standing here of course you're going to see something else versus on the bottom you are actually going to see something else because you're on the other end of the spectrum on the sphere right so so, so I, I hear what you're saying you're 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 and i was you don't get me wrong your mind is limited but if you click the southern star rotation right button on the frequently asked question page and then you scroll down we'll show you how all of this works okay we'll show you how professor dave is misleading you right we'll show you how there's plenty of options but the truth is when we look up at these stars we can prove that they're not these giant burning balls of gas in a scientifically impossible space vacuum that they claim that they are at these distances we can prove that they're all close and fixed in their positions so and we can, we can show you how they move around. So again, once you see that, once you see, see that, then you'll, 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 you'll start to understand. You'll start to understand. And then the other, the other thing he said was eclipses. Um, we have what's called the Selenian eclipse, where the sun and the moon are both above the horizon and the eclipse starts on the moon. Well, if the earth is below my feet and the sun and the moon are both above the horizon, how does the eclipse start? Because the earth isn't 
lined up yet, but it starts. And worse than that, it starts from the top of the moon and it comes down sometimes, which proves not saying what it is, that it's not the earth. It proves it's not the earth doing it. Okay. It proves. And when we watch eclipses, you know, like the, the solar eclipse, that's my favorite. Um, you're not, you think you see the, the, the earth in there, but that's not the case. That's not the case at all. Um, let me just show you real quick and then we could wrap it up. Um, this is uh, invisible. So here we have an eclipse and you think this is the moon, but what you're really seeing there is sky. You're seeing there is a missing part of the sun. A mi this is, you, you think there's a moon there, but you don't see it, right? You think there's a moon there, but you don't see it, right? This is just a missing part of the sun. So what's going on? In the eclipses section of my, of my app, there's a, there's a thing called uh, our projected sun. Watch it, and it'll give you a whole new view of what we're seeing in the sky. No moon. We're missing the sun. We're missing the sun. If something is eclipsing it, but not a physical object in front of it. I think it's something behind it, blocking its light from getting to us. Again, no moon. This is just a, a missing part of the sun. Well, once again, so, I have never heard such a thing, but one, but once again, I understand it. And I think based on your uh, theory, I think every country needs to reform their education system and start teaching kids. Uh, all scientists should quit their jobs or, or come up with something else. Because once again, you have your own points. We have our own points, right? As you said, we don't believe in mainstream media. I absolutely don't. Neither do you. If, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, uh, yeah. you're going on your calculations, your app and everything. And, and once again, you know, the world has 8 billion population, you know, so if, if, if 10 million, where'd you get that number? Where'd you get that number from the liars that lied to you about everything? The world does not have 8 billion people. I think it's closer to 2 billion. Okay. They're lying about everything. If there were 8 billion people, you can give every family an acre in Australia and half of Australia would be empty. Okay. Then, 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 so let me ask you, 75% of the earth is covered with, wa with water. So you're having 88 billion people living on 25% of the land available on earth, which is well, densely populated, but, right? So if you gave every family an acre in Australia worldwide, half of Australia would be empty and the rest of the world would be empty. And okay? did you get They're that number? Because we, we, we took the measurement of the size of Australia, according to them, according to them, of course, I think it's actually much bigger, right? And the 8 million, and we divide it out, and there's tons of, that's, everybody can live in Australia. Everybody with an acre. Most people don't have an acre, all right? So they're lying to you about everything. And, you, and your strongest claims are based on pseudoscience. They're based on nothing other than somebody wrote it in a book. They're based on the top 10 proofs the earth is a globe, which have all been debunked in the debunking the debunker section of my app. Okay, so so in that case, why did Google take down the flat earth search keyword down? And and why is it not because why doesn't this populate so many searches now versus as you said in 2017, it was one of the highest search keywords on Google? What well, well, I don't understand your question. Why why did so, they so so, so why why is that now if you look for flatter society, flatter believers and so forth, it does not populate a lot of search results compared to what it used to back in 2007. It, right? it populates what they want you to see. It populates something that will steer you away from flat earth. It will populate you to a, a place that says flat earthers think the earth is rising. Flat earthers think we're a disc with an ice wall. Flat earthers think that there isn't gravity. And you know, It will populate to a whole bunch of things that will make you look away from flat earth. It will never show you my channel. It will never show you a stranger's guide to flat earth 21 questions. It will well, never bring you your channel. I can see your name yep. the moment but, I look for flat earth believer. Guess what? Well, David Bice shows up right there. Yeah, but but it'll come up in a, in hit piece videos. It'll come up with the Professor Dave video, but they'll never show you the mind shock version of that video where we analyze it for uh, fallacies and ad homs. And, uh, and Professor Dave, uh, who's not a professor, he's a musician, um, is – is it's just it's just complete and total fallacies which he uses but he says it in a condescending way and people are like well he must be right he's a professor he's not a professor right I, well, I hope i was not condescending because my goal here is to bring you on so no, people can see no problem, Sid, i have a, i have two 
two things. One, I'm offering three Bitcoins, which is about $100,000 to anybody that can come up with one glow proof. But you have to watch the featured video each day. Each day, there's a video right here. So for two weeks while you're having your breakfast, click this thumbnail, watch the video. And at the end of that two weeks, if you think you have a proof, send it to me, but hit the frequently asked questions button first. Um, to make sure it's not answered in there. And if you have one, you win three Bitcoins. The second thing is you're going to have a, I have a team of trolls that are going to show up in your comment section and they're going to comment on everyone's comments. And when they do, you'll realize one, they didn't even listen to the show. They're just going to comment. They'll never offer a glow proof. And if you check their channel, they have zero content on their channel. So what did they just create that YouTube channel just so they can comment on your post? These are, these are. But here's the thing. Uh, everything they do, they never offer a proof. They'll never address how come we can see those mountains. They'll never, they'll never address anything. Do we have like two more minutes to show you one more thing? Yes. And Dave, before also we we'll, uh, we'll let you go, would you mind taking a second to let our audience know where they can find you? And we will put everything in the description of this video, but it, it's much easier if you just tell people. Uh, a little Absolutely. Bit about the only video. the only link you need to find all my channels, all my social media, how to book me for a show, everything. FlatEarthDave.com. Pretty easy. FlatEarthDave.com. Everything's there. Again, we're having a conference in, uh, in uh, October 20th and 21st in in Las Vegas. Um, called Flattoberfest. The link is right on my website. Um, check it out and uh, you'll meet amazing people. Um, so uh, Dave, you can show whatever you wanted to show before we come. All right. So, 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 so I'll walk, I'm going to walk you through this. So here you're on an airplane and you're looking for, it's nighttime. You're about to take off and you're looking at some stars in the sky to, through the front window. You're the pilot. You're looking at some stars. Okay. You with me? And so the stars are right in front of you. They're not above you. They're right in front of you. But if the plane flies over the curve of the earth, now those stars are not in front of them. They're above them, right? Because you're going over the curve. You with me? Go for it. So here is a time lapse going north to south from Berlin to um, you know, South America. And during the whole time lapse, these stars don't go up. Matter of fact, they go down a little bit. These stars should process over 40 degrees up. Now, according to Google Earth, this flight simulated on Google Earth will show the stars going up. Show them going up. But there's none of that motion. Now, the globe trolls come out and go, that's because it's the spin of the Earth that's negating them. Well, that wouldn't be true because the Earth is spinning twice as fast as the airplane, so there would be some. But what it also would mean in the opposite direction they should now move twice as fast if they're being negated. And the pilots have filmed it in both directions and never ever do this to the stars process like they would be required to if we're diving over a ball. These stars in front of me, these stars right here, if my fingers are stars, right? They would require to be over my head as I go over the ball, but they never do. They never do this. A computer simulation shows you what they should do. Reality shows you something else. All of this stuff can be found on the app under the Flat Earth Experiments area. Um, the app's only $3. If $3 is too much for you, spend 500 hours searching the internet and find two hours worth of good content. Um, you know, if that's, if that's what you want to do, feel free. But um, flatearthdave.com, there's also a free, it's called the Flat Earth Crash Course. Um, it's a series of videos. It's, you cannot watch three of them without realizing you don't live on a globe. So it's up to you. People don't like having their world rug yanked out from underneath them but the truth is um it's <laughs> the world is flat and we're not spinning the other thing is i saw you did an article uh, a show with um a guy and you who love elon musk go check out my the elon musk banner on my channel um you know i can show you that he's faking rocket launches that he's faking everything and electric cars which i love electric cars are the death of us okay what happens in florida when everyone has an electric car, or even half the people, or even 10% of the people have electric cars, there's a hurricane and they need to evacuate and the power's out. All the highways will be blocked. All the cars that get flooded will burn their houses down and no one will be able to evacuate and everybody will die. Okay? Well, natural it's catastrophe can always happen, right? That's Yeah, but that's so, so having happens. electric cars is, is bad. The other thing is, the electric so cars. Hurricane, how can you drive a car even if it's a? Uh, because you have gas. Speed. Because before how the. How can you drive in a flood of water? No, no. Before the hurricane, they evacuate, and the highways so get backed up. But when you, 
So when you have an electric car, the EV, yeah. Charge no, the EVs will electric. all, none of them will make it in the amount of time. They will all run out of electricity and then they won't be able. And then after that, they won't be able to charge up anyway because there'll be no electricity. It happens all the time. And the other thing is the amount of electricity that, that they have to generate the electricity, it outweighs the savings. I love electric cars, but they should run off of etheric energy, not off of the burning of, of uh, you know, carbon fuels. So that's it. That's a whole nother show. Oh, okay. Well, David, uh, man, this was really fun. Uh, I really actually, I enjoyed having you more than what I thought I would, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it was, it was really fun having you and, and listening to you, your viewpoints. And, and once again, you know, thanks so much for, I know you're a busy guy. Thanks so much for uh, taking the time to come on our podcast and uh, be our guest and uh, sharing your views with the audience. And uh, uh, let's see what the audience thinks about this. And uh, we'll keep an eye on the, on the comment section. And, uh, you know, we want to wish you yep. all the very best, man. Just watch out for the trolls. Don't let them st suck your energy out or tire you out because that's what they're there for. Check their channel. You'll see that there's no content. I call those channels the globe proof channels because that's where they've compiled all the globe proofs, which is why their channel is completely empty. So just watch out for them. You know, if somebody comes along with a good question, let's let's answer that question. I'll try to go into the right. comment section. And if somebody asks a real question, I'll, you know, if I can post a link, I'll, I'll post a link, but I'll try to explain it the best I can with the time I have. Please, Dave. Thank you very much, Dave. Have a great day. It was a pleasure, sir. FlatEarthDave.com. Thanks so much, Sid. See ya. Bye-bye.